Here's my pile of junk. I mean, junk wood. You know how much I spent on all this wood? Four bucks! Let me show you what I got. This slab oak, I bought for $4. It's the only thing I paid for. Found it at a barn farm, and it's all oak. I got a handful of these pieces. Four bucks piece, that big I could hardly go wrong. These are all oak as well. They're beautiful. I paid nothing for them because they were left on the side of the road by somebody. Uh, there were probably at least 50 of them stacked up nicely. I mean, I was a little afraid maybe I was taking something from somebody, but no, I mean, it was clearly left behind for anybody. I picked up, I think, 25 of them. A lot of them are really uh, not in great shape, but I got enough here to salvage to make the legs for this table. All I gotta do is make them pretty again. This giant piece, long piece, I'm not even sure what it is. Feels like a hardwood. I'm almost tempted to say it's maple. We'll find out more when I clean it up. But this came off a long pallet that I got for free. Speaking of pallets, this is where all this came from. Now this is free stuff. I, of course, I'm not paying for a pallet. I got some sources that have a lot of pallets, but you can pick up fine pallets about anywhere. Um, the only problem with it, very labor intensive to get them to this point. You could make an argument that I paid for this as well. But I'm gonna say no, I did not, because this is leftover scrap, three quarter inch sanded down plywood. And I'm reason, and of course I didn't buy it from Menards, but I bought it for a workbench. A client had ordered some workbenches to be ordered, and this is this is left over. So, I mean, if you're looking for just a free scrap here, you know, you want to mimic what I'm making, not sure that's what you want to do. So I'm gonna start off working on the legs, and I'll do the tabletop after the word. After the word? Is that a word? After the fact. Okay, so uh, I gotta really clean these things up. There's some real damage. I got some. I, I gotta really investigate. See these bugs, bug holes and so forth, the wood's gonna be intact. I think it is, but there's all sorts of staples on, the, on here. And if they go through my planer and other saws, I gotta make sure I'm not gonna ruin them first. So step one is honestly, it's going to be to strip, look for and strip all the metal off and then start cutting them, cutting them into size. I'm not gonna waste my time sending these whole things to the planer uh, if I'm only gonna end up using half of the board. So that's what I'm gonna do first one. Clean them up and then cut them to size. Start to put together my legs. So I'm gonna put a I know can't really envision it right now is what I'm pointing out here, but these are my two legs. I cut these at 10 degree angles. And so the tail, try to match, it's gonna go this direction, four foot this direction. There's two legs here, there's gonna be two legs down there. We're gonna attach another board here, here, and then one straight across there. That makes sense to you? No, it doesn't make any sense to me either. I'm just a wood I'm just a wannabe woodworker. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just making crap up as I go. A set of jig so I can repeat this cut. I really don't know if it's called a jig while I'm doing, but doggone it, felt good to say it. That's it. I'm a woodworker, want to be woodworker, making crap up. That's what I'm doing.
Proof is in the pudding. Do we have pudding? Exact same size. Oh, yeah. Look how they line up. Yo! Yeah. Some people say measure twice, cut once. I, <laughs> not the worthless, not the uh, clueless woodworker. Better measure about 75 times and cut once and probably buy extra material because I'm still gonna screw up. So here's, here's what I'm trying to figure out here. Here's what I'm putting together. So that's gonna be one leg on one end of the leg, on one end of the table. We're gonna, gonna notch this out, these here, and place this, slip it right in there. Anyway, so I'll come over here, I'm gonna notch it in there too. So I've got a 10 degree angle. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this. 10 degrees, this piece right here, 10 degrees. These, I'm not. Hopefully I can measure these top, that's bottom actually, top, to match up with each other. At least that's the plan. So I'm gonna cut a 10 degree off each end so this piece fits flush with this. And, and, and yeah! here I want two pieces that are going to be 44 inches long the table's going to be 48 inches long so you do the math you got a two inch overhang on each side actually put their sawdust and other scrap wood into bags and they take it to recycling centers what are you thinking that waste of time and money I burn it. I'm a redneck I burn it steps I'm following are pretty simple since I haven't pre-thought anything out I just make it up as I go but so I've cut my pieces now I'm going to use my what do you call that thing? Uh, oh, it's down there. Yeah, yeah. My joiner to start squaring everything up. So I'd like everything on my legs to be squared. And and here's what I'm squaring up. Now those are all all my pieces. Mine's two. I'll show those other two pieces here in a little bit. What I'm going to put on the legs here. I'm going to square them up here, two sides on my joiner. Then I'm going to take them to the table saw, square them all four sides, and then I'm going to run them through the planer to make sure everything's the same thickness. Well, I think I took off some weight my table. You see, this is a probably six six inches deep at least. But here are all my pieces on two sides. No, that's not the same. On two sides, I've got them off joiner, nice, smooth, and square. Ready to go. Ready to go on the next step.
Well, the beauty is starting to come out a little bit. Start to see that there's some potential for some beauties. That was what it did look like. So anyway, I'm going to run it through my planer. Get the same thickness for all my boards. For again, we're still focusing on the legs, table legs, and uh, and that's what we want to do. Once we do that, it'll be time to start jointing them together. <laughs> fairly content with the way they're cleaning up I've had different types of wood that I didn't really anticipate so this is this is a red oak and I've seen discoloration like this on red oak before I you know on maple you call it spalted maple can you call it spalted oak so it seems like to me uh, I tend to like it this is this table this coffee table is made out of reclaim wood so it should show all that character of, different types of, of, the, of the age and the use and so forth so it should be rustic but so I got red oak I got what I believe is maple I'm not even 100% sure pretty sure it's maple but even then because that man that really looks like spalted maple right there uh, it's definitely a hard wood it's heavy it's very very hard very hard hit myself head with earlier and it is very hard so I've got maple, red oak, spalted maple, spalted oak, all into all that. The pieces are looking pretty sharp. When I get a good coat of uh, stain on there and a finish, yeah, I think it's going to turn into a real beaut. I'll get close to the fun. I got all my pieces. They're all spread out all over the place, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up, mash them up with the uh, different types of wood. and and then trace it out to where I'm going to, you know, I'm going to call it shiplap. I know it's not called that, but, but to joint them. So what, exactly what I plan to do, if these, if these two pieces were to go together, I'm going to cut basically half this off and half that off so it slips right in. Use a dowel, uh, probably two dowels in there to, to strengthen up. I don't want any screws to show. So that, that's my plan. And I was planning to make all the legs underneath, even the bottom of the table, to be a black stain. Because I've always liked the contrast of a black stain with, uh, excuse me, a contrast of black legs with a colorful top, something that highlights the wood on top. I've always liked that. But I, I like this wood so dang much for the legs, I'm like starting to doubt, doubt myself. Like maybe, maybe I should just use a different colored stain to really highlight or even go clear to highlight those colors. Anyway, so on the top of the table, I'm going to do a uh, herringbone style. So this with my legs, probably will try the black stain. At least, you know what? I'll put it on before I put that black stain on the actual boards. I will take a piece of scrap and test it out, see if I like it. And then I will use some kind of natural colored stain here or light stain to highlight the different colors of the wood. Obviously, this, these are junky boards. Got a ton of work doing them, but that's the fun. So here's, here's what I got set up now. Got a marking right in the middle of that board. Get my little cell phone light going on here as well. You can see it right, right in the middle there. And so I've got a miter saw set 
to go no deeper than that. Yeah, well, I just got the idea here. You just see, th that's a pain in the butt. But all I got, I think all I gotta do is put a board back here. Would you bring this out? And uh, no more problems. I'm a little disappointed. I can't say I'm surprised because I've got said to you, I'm not a woodworker. I'm a wannabe woodworker. I love doing it. This is exciting. This is going to turn out to be awesome. But what I was trying, I, I took time out there to chisel and use that rasp because this isn't completely lined up. Probably no sixteenth of an inch off right here, which is unacceptable. However. What I needed to figure out was that because I needed to chisel out and smooth out the rough parts there from the miter saw, or is my miter saw just not set deep enough? And this kind of tells me the miter saw is not set deep enough, just by, you know, figure 30 seconds of an inch. So you do it on both sides, you end up gaining a 16th of an inch. Just a bummer. That's, now I gotta go mess with that again. Well, see, here's where we're at now. Uh, I have got to, see, I've got these cut in. So I got the, I don't know what you want to call the frame. I, heck, it's two legs. Anyway, I got to cut these out, cut these faces out. So what I did is I, I got everything dry fit, basically, with clamps. No glue, nothing. I'm going to glue it up and put dowels in there. And so I lined up these, that one, this one, perfectly. And now I'm going to trace it. I'm going to trace it right here and here so I know where to cut on the miter saw. the legs together glued up I used dowels put them together and, and I, if you didn't see it in the videos because I don't know what really happened I was working on my stuff talking to the dang camera 
while I was working on it and then looked at it, it's, it's a weird mode, you know. Not only apparently am I a wannabe woodworker, I want to be a YouTube dude as well who can't understand how to use his GoPro, even though I've had it for a lot of years. So what you missed, if you missed, if you didn't miss it, I'm being redundant here. But so I got all the joints in, put it all together, at least these parts here. And what I did is I put dowels in here. I got two dowels basically, just like that, each spot. All from this side. Boom, 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 boom. I don't think I did a terrible job, but there's certainly space I'm gonna be uh, sanding around a little bit and also a little bit of wood filler. And actually up here on top, that's where the tabletop's gonna be. So I don't think I'll worry about that one bit. But the other spots, a uh, couple of spots like uh, right there, you could certainly put a little bit of wood filler in. Some of these gaps right there, definitely, and, and there. But now um, I'm going to be off to sanding these things. I'll sand it down real nice, real smooth. There's certainly some glue that snuck out, and I don't like that because my father-in-law told me, hey, 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 you can't stain glue, so put your stain down before you start gluing stuff up, and I got impatient. I, I had to glue it up last night, so now I'm going to be stuck with possibly some spots that I can't. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. I think it's going to turn out just fine. I think. Anyway, put some filler in there. I'm going to sand this down. And then it's time to put the part to go over on the top. That's how they're going to connect. Connect the two. It's going to be one on top. Oop, top and bottom. It's going to look handsome. And then, and then I got, I got two other pieces I'm going to try to put on here. Because, is it necessary? Nope. Do I think it'll look cool? Yes. So, why not? Before I sand, I want to take some of these, what are you going to call these thing, majiggies? And try to scrape out as much glue as I can, and then I'll sand it nice. You going out with the girls this weekend? She's coming along. Come along is fine, but what I want to add here, and it's it's going to add strength, but it's it's just for cosmetic, to be honest, because this thing is really really strong. You got maple, you got oak. It's already strong. However, what I want to get here, put two other pieces, to cut them at 45s, right here and here. I said it will add some strength, but it's completely unnecessary. It just I want to do it.
she's looking right now. I mean, this is totally. <laughs> Looks terrible, I guess. But you get the idea. I'm um, a coffee table. Yeah, I kind of like the base of it. I do really like it a lot. Um, I, I got a, I got a confession. I lied to you. I didn't mean to lie to you, but I ended up lying. I told you this thing cost me four bucks. Well, now it's up to, it's up to 20. Bought these things, because I started thinking more and more about how I'm going to attempt this after I put all these pieces of pallet wood on here that I, it's gonna be fairly heavy. And I, and I, I was thinking, oh, I could use dowels, I could use screws. But let's talk about seasonal movement, you know, of this wood. This tabletop certainly is going to move a little bit through the weather, uh, seasons, the moisture, and so forth. So I bought 20 of these figure eight, whoop, figure eight fasteners. Got them off of Amazon, and they came with these half-inch screws. But truth is, this plywood's three-quarter, and you had to add that on there too. And this is going to get thinned out because it's going about to go through the plane or get thinner. But because of that, I went ahead and bought some three quarter inch screws to spill. That way I can rest, rest well knowing that whoever has this doesn't have to worry. Yeah, that looks like I lost half my table. Oh, half my wood there. Yeah. I mean, those are the only ones I set to the joiner. I've got more over here. They're here, here for my tabletop, right on top of that beautiful thing. Well, still gonna send it. <laughs> Yeah, that's all from using the planer this evening on our pallet pieces that are going to go on the tabletop. That is a full wheelbarrow full of shavings. So what I'm going to do here is I've, I've drawn out on my board, it's two by four feet, and I pu pulled out the 45s too, because I'm not going to do just a herringbone all the way down one direction. What I plan to do is have it herringbone like this, herringbone like this, herringbone like this, and like this so basically got four patterns going on at once now i planed a whole bunch of wood i've cut a whole bunch of wood and that's what it looks like now at its thickness so what i'm going to do now is hopefully i got enough and then set it up and once i've set it up then it's going to so i'm going to start gluing and brad nailing it together
Yo. That's out of can. I got that 45 here. Fairly, fairly flush on top. But the thing is, being fairly flush, I got sand like crazy on this thing yet. So it's just trying to make sure I sand it the right way. I think maybe I'm gonna drop this just a pinch more on this side, trying to figure out where the actual level is what we want to be. So, and then I'm gonna put two and eighth inch brad nails through here to hold it in place. I think what I'll do. I'm gonna brad nail that in here, and then I'll put another clamp right here. And I'll do the same thing here, so I'll end up putting five clamps in. And I'm basically gonna repeat the process uh, four times. So I think I got everything pretty dang secure. Now got a little tiny gaps right here. I don't like that one. That one there really bothers me. And it, and, and the one right there too. So not a secret of the trade at all, but a good one is I took some of the sawdust from these boards out of my miter saw, mix it up with a bunch of tight bond three glue and mix it up. And I'm gonna shove that in there so it's a wood filler Essentially, that's going to match exactly the wood. I got these eight figure eight fasteners all the way around. And I might be overkill. <laughs> Not sure, but I'd rather be overkill than underkill. Because I figure most people when they pick this up are gonna pick it up here on the ends. And all this weight's gonna be coming down off the screws. They're all three quarter inch screws. And let's turn this puppy over for the first time. Woo! I didn't expect it to be either. Yeah, look at that color. 